Good evening. Hello, hello, hello. Greet us as you come in. Hello, hello, hello. Greet us. Hello. Happy Thursday. Happy Friday Eve to you that are joining. Good evening. Please, as you come in, tag a friend. Hey, Felicia, God bless you, woman of God. Who else is coming in the room? Hello, please tag somebody as you are coming in. Let your friends know. Let your family know. Let your good, good evening, Brother Saunders. Great to see you this evening. It's so good to see you that you are a uh, faithful person to tune in. Well, you're a consistent person, so thank you so much. Same to you, Sister Brittany. Great to see you all. Thank you for the love. You're going to see my face in just a moment. You're going to see my big smile for the love that you are giving me. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Thank you that I am equally as grateful to see you as you are to see me. God bless you. Thank you so very much. God bless you. Tag a friend. Tag a friend. Put somebody's name in the comments. Let them know that we are on live tonight. Class is in session. The Spirit of the Lord is going to bless us in a rich and a powerful and a mighty way. Thank you for the love. God bless you. Hey, cuz, what's happening in Duval County today? God bless you. It's raining here um, in Atlanta. So if you hear a little thunder, a little raindrop, that's that's all that's going on. Um, the earth is being showered and cleansed. And good evening to my sister from another mother. That is Dr. Elder Carolyn McDuffie. God bless you, woman of God. Good to see you. Great things in store for you, um, Elder, Carolyn, Elder Carolyn. I'm so happy and so excited for you. Been in my thoughts and prayers lately. And so I just want to say thank God for what he's doing. And he is about to do even more in your life. Hey, tag your kin, folks. Praise the Lord. Put your friends in. Put, put your friends in on what's happening right here. Um, right in front of you, please don't forget to go after the broadcast. Or if you jump off, jump right back on, please. And send me your email address by going to natashadavis.org. Putting in your email address will help me push to you when this book will be available. We'll push to you the link to pre-order and to also let you know all the goodies and the products that are uh, being created just for this nation of believers. So God bless you. Thank you so much, Brittany King, for tagging someone. You're going to get something special. I appreciate that so much. Come on in. Come on in. Go to NatashaDavis.org. And of course, as always, you are welcome to um to sew um at uh on cash app that is the dollar sign natasha n davis so so good to see each and every one of you come in on tonight and here is yours truly god bless you each of you love you so very much glad to see you praise god love you so much please tag a friend share with a friend um, on tonight so that we can quickly get into the word of God. How many of you have um, been having a miraculous week, a marvelous week, and, and, and that you have so much gratitude for who God is in your life? Go ahead and put a praise on the screen. Hallelujah. Glory to the living God. Our God is a good God. Give him a praise. Give him a salute. Give him and each other a salutation. God bless you. I see um, uh, Elder Carolyn is, is headed into work. So we want to pray a covering and a protection over her in the name of Jesus on the highways and on the byways. Thank God for the praises coming in. The highways and the byways, those of you that have been traveling, um, I trust that you are safe and that you are well and that you're not trying to do any of this technologically while you are um, 
on the broadcast. So be, be safe. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good evening, Sister Mo. God bless you. The Lord is doing so many great and wonderful things. As you come in, share and tag a person. The prophecy has been coming to me uh, for individuals. A true intercessor will always see a face, get a name. Um, the intercessors are open gates to the Lord. We are we are conduits, and the Lord can speak to you concerning a person. And so, um, a couple of days this week, uh, a lot of my prayer time was not in English; it was in the Holy Ghost. And so, which means that the Lord is downloading mysteries. He is revealing secrets. He's speaking on the be your behalf. He's um, he's organizing, he's uh, constructing things on your behalf. And so I'm so glad and so excited to be a conduit in which the Lord can use me. So when you are intercessor, the Lord will intrude on your time. He will interrupt um, on your time, no matter what it is that you're doing, but he needs to be able to use your mouth. He needs to be able to use your mouth. My mouth is gainfully employed for the kingdom of God. Amen. And if that's you, put an amen on the screen. Praise the Lord. My mouth is gainfully employed. Amen. For the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, so get your Bibles and get your, I hope that you have a piece of paper. I will be sharing the scripture, our key scriptures. I will be um, sharing with you on the screen the, the key scriptures, which are coming tonight from St. John 16 and 15 and 1 Kings 3. St. John 16, 15. I'm going to share those scriptures with you on the screen. So at least get a piece of paper to write your journals, your notebooks, and a pen, a Crayola crayon, a marker, whatever it is that you have. Get it because uh, we are about to go through the word of God. Praise the Lord. And so um, we have been in a time of deep prayer and consecration before the Lord concerning our nation um, about a good three sessions. Um, I've been talking to you about that kingdom come. I've been um, talking to you about how we pray Matthew 6, 9, and 10, that Jesus was telling his disciples that when you pray, you pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We have been talking about God bless you, Dr. Nixon. Thank you for joining us on tonight. We have been talking about um, praying for our nation. And um, some weeks before then, the Spirit of the Lord had me to minister to you about persevering. Now you have it in the news where um, the government or uh, the powers that be, they anticipate that COVID-19 is about to get much stronger and is coming in for a second wave. So when I was saying to you, this is your time to persevere. This is your time to be in a posture of perseverance. Why? Because when you are in a posture of perseverance, it is a mindset that empowers you and strengthens you. So when you set yourself in that place, you get strength. Um, and, and those of you that know anything about working out, the best training that you could get is endurance training, which means what? It means that you're able to go over the long haul. And so who you are in this moment is not as important as who you are over a period of time. Amen. I feel the presence of the Lord and the preacher coming up already. Who you are in this moment is not as important as who you are over time. And so you could be friends with a person in this moment. You just meet them and they can put on appearances. But over time, you'll be able to determine who it is really you have. Over time, you'll be able to determine what kind of person the uh, it is over time. The Bible says in Proverbs 17 and 17 that a brother is born for um, uh, that a friend is born for my adversity. Right. That's what the Bible says. Um, it says that a friend loves at all times. Put it on the screen for your reference. 
My aim and my objective always when we come together in exhortation. The word exhortation means this. The Lord is gathering you together to impart and to give you some good news. So when you are being exhorted, that means you are being gathered and that you are receiving an impartation. So that's what exhortation means, that there is a strengthening and a building up for a particular purpose. So in my exhortations to you, um, I want you to go ahead and put that up on the screen. Proverbs 17, 17, that a friend loves at all times. And a brother is born for your adversity. And in that text, both friend and brother are intimate um, um, descriptions of who people are to you over time. We're not going to just meet and be friends. But over time, Jesus started out with his disciples calling him their his servants. But over time, after they came to the sermons, after he taught them, after they showed up day after day, he stopped calling them friends and they got a promotion. He said, you are no longer my friend, my servants, but you are friends. You are not my servants, but you are friends. What? Um, uh, John 8 and 31 says that you are my disciples indeed if you continue in my word. Praise the Lord. And so perseverance is something that you need for the long haul, for the for the long haul. And I started out um, days before July came in saying this is your strategy, your technique for the second end, whether a COVID um, another wave of COVID-19 is coming or not. Praise the Lord. God's got you because you're in this for the long haul. Right. Strength over time. Um, I believe it's Proverbs 24 that says that in the day of adversity, you faint, you are not really strong. So anybody can walk around um, looking like, sounding like in a moment's notice, notice, but it is in the moment of testing. It is in the moment where there are no supplies, in the moment that you don't have a job, the moment that you receive the bad report, it is strength over time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel the power of God pushing through this atmosphere to teach this word on tonight. So please say a prayer for me. And so over time, and so this nation is in a place to where we need God. And so what you must do is you must pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done. For the sake of time, we don't have time to go back through those three. This is part three on tonight. We don't have time um, to cover that. But I really um, encourage you to go to my YouTube page. My YouTube page now has those messages uploaded. So for the person that's looking at this in the replay, the person that will look at this on YouTube tonight or in the morning, tomorrow and days beyond, those that you that will look um, on my Facebook page and you might be wondering where those prior messages are my friends They are available to you on my YouTube page. So let's get in the word And so we have been in a place to where we forgot um, Not last not on Sunday, but the on last Thursday I said to you by myself it won't work and so the um, and so the week before that I said to you um, don't go back. Don't go back. What are we not going back to? We're not going back to the place that we were prior to um, the pandemic um, outbreak. Our world is really in a state of of, of, of really needing God. It is, a, it's in a mess. We are not one nation under God. Don't, don't, don't believe the hype that we are not one nation unified under God. Why? Because we have stories in our headlines, like, uh, um, what's her name? Um, Miss Maxwell. Uh, she is, 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 uh, uh, just Lane, just Lane Maxwell, who was the partner in crime with Jeffrey Epstein with sex trafficking. Now, before you turn the dial or shut, up, shut off the dial, I want you to understand that the nation is in more peril than you probably want to admit. And so tonight is our 
kingdom transfer. I'm going to talk to you tonight about having a kingdom transfer. And so for all of the people who turn their heads, there are uh, so many women um, the, um, uh, missing right now because of Mr. Epstein who committed suicide. While he was in prison, he committed suicide, but recently they um, arrested Dislane, who would lure the girls. Uh, we're talking about these are young women. I, got a I have a daughter that's college age. I have a daughter getting ready to go to college. And so college age students where he would entice them with money and with things, and they would work together to lure them, and these girls would disappear. And so women who are in the lower area, Echelon, they say that women that live in um, low districts uh, uh, where, where there's poverty, where they don't have a job, where there are immigrants, uh, women who they, who they thought wouldn't be um, characterized as important, um, these women have been snatched from our society. Let me remind you why the nation needs prayer. You have convicted felons who you have watched their movies. You have watched their television shows. Bill Cosby. You listen to R. Kelly's music. And those guys now are in prison because they were convicted felons of sexual immorality, abusing teenage girls or young women who didn't have um, the discernment, didn't have um, what was needed or necessary not to be caught in a sex trap. And these women who are caught in sex traps, they are put to work for no, they are put to work in the labor force. And so where there should be jobs that are available to people who really need them, these cowards have taken slavery, these young women, in some cases young men, and put them to work. And now the labor in our nations are beneath what they need to be simply because these people have become robbers and they have become thieves. And so women who are in the foster care. I take my assignment very um, seriously because I was in foster care when I was younger. That could have easily been me. I was a runaway. Nobody called the police. Everybody just seemed to have looked their, uh, turned their faces or said, that's not my business or they looked the other way. But crime is happening right under your noses. And you you dare not look into um, the very thing. So for, for years, I was on the street going from pillar to post or living with some man twice my age because I didn't have anywhere else to go and being in the foster care uh, um, houses sometimes more than not I was being sexually abused by the same people who you um, put me in the in their care and so this thing is real it is it is real so you live in a nation that is full of hatred you live in a nation and just because you've been permitted to go out into society, the governments, there is some trickery, you know, it's some, it's some foolishness going on. And so you need a kingdom transfer for these reasons that I'm talking to you about. I'm going to describe what that is. I'm going to dismantle um, the miscommunication and the misinformation that you've had about the transfers that God really wants you to have. This is the time where you look around and say, oh, why is this prevailing? Why are we about to have, or why has it been said that we're about to have a second wave? Why? Because the people want to do what they want to do. Around Memorial Day was the time where it's begin to spike. I live in Georgia, and two hours from here is LaGrange, Georgia, and right now they're number two in the nation for the corona spike. And so you're saying, you know, some people are ready to get back out into the world and they're ready to get back out into nation. But this nation is still um, in a mindset that is disassociated with God would have us to do. Primarily, that is to pray. That is to turn from our wicked ways to pray, to repent. On behalf of our nation, um, and he is going to heal our land. And so, while all of this is going on, while people was was was, uh, I, I'm going to say house arrest, because while while people are being released from jail, registered sex offenders. I don't know about you, but I have the right. 
to talk about this passionately, passionately because I was a person that was held at gunpoint. So you have people out here who are, uh, are ready to get back to crime. Crime is happening, but the, but the focus is so much on the epidemic. So now it's flying under the radar. Wickedness is bound in the heart of, of men. Wickedness is bound in the heart of, of people. And we have these um, things that is coming out in our, in our world because of the energy and the karma that is being released from the actions of men. The actions of men. And so we must stay on our posture to pray. Maybe you don't have... Uh, maybe you've never been sexually abused. Maybe you have never been on drugs. Maybe you've never had a parent that has suffered from um, drug abuse or drug addiction. Or you've never had a person who had mental illness. And some people that have been on the streets because of mental illness and their families can't find them because now they've been snatched and put into ladies labor camps um, by people who are cowards and full of hatred and full of wickedness. And so we must pray. This is the reason why we got to pray our kingdom come right over the 4th of July holiday. While you eating baked beans and, and ribs, people were being snatched. You know, not that you don't have a reason to celebrate our independence from Britain. Um, but the problem is, is that the men are in, um, in released in this world. And as long as we are free as people. People are going to have to, we're going to have to pray. We're going to have to see it God's way. You don't think that there's not that we, you know, that there's anything wrong, but your nation, but anytime a man, a woman could be in her house and her house get shot up by the police officers and being in law enforcement herself, there was something wrong with this nation. And so this is the time where God is saying, stop taking, take time out to stop prophesying cars and houses. And I don't mind doing presbytery. I talked to you about protecting your potential. Did I not? Protecting your potential. And one of the things I do as a prophet, when you do presbytery, when you give presbytery, is that you speak to the potential of a person. You see the great things that God has in store for them, and you begin to speak to their potential. And then from that point, you pray the kingdom of God in concerning the prophecies that's over your life. And so with that being said, um, part three now is going to, we're going to talk about a kingdom transfer and our nation, um, is, is, is needing this transfer, um, that, that, that God has. So I talked to you, um, saying to you that are just now joining us, please tag somebody. Thank you. Um, brother Wade for joining us, tag somebody, share this video with someone, please. Tag, put somebody's name in the comments um, and tag somebody. And so on tonight, your pens and your piece of paper ready. Um, the Spirit of the Lord has been talking to me um, about how we pray for our government and how we pray for our nation's um, leaders. And so um, th and through these scriptures, you begin to see in your prayer time, the effective way for you to pray. I said to you also recently, remember that a person, what you pray is based on what you know, what you pray, you pray based on what you know. And if you don't know the word of God, you are not praying the will of God. He is not interested in your rants and emotional meltdowns. Come on, read your Bible. Ecclesiastics chapter five says, don't come before God. With all of your babblings and with your all of your um, em emotional expressions. He said that I'm in the heavens and you are in the earth. So I know what you have need of. You get yourself together and you come to him based on what the will of God is. And so he's not the kind of God. You're an intelligent being. God created you to be an intelligent being. He's giving you his will um, to, to learn his will. You are actually have power and dominion. And as soon as we can stop being lazy, as soon as we can stop being lazy, as soon as we can stop being lazy about 
what God has called you to do. Forget being a prophet. Forget being an evangelist. Forget being a pastor teacher. Forget being an apostle. What you are called to first and foremost is to be a person that is a ruling person. It's called having dominion. Read your Bible. Genesis 1 talks about God created just in his image and in his likeness to have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every creeping thing and over every living thing. You have rulership. What we're missing is management. So before I get ahead of myself, um, I want you to go to this scripture with me and I'm going to actually put it up here on the screen. Get ready. Here we go. Here it is. John 16 and 15 talks about and says this. This is Jesus. And he says, therefore, give to your, ser your servant. I'm sorry. That's, that's the wrong scripture. That's not John 16. My bad. Little user error going on. I apologize. That is actually the other scripture. So let me collect myself all the way back together. See, when you give people technology, this is what be happening. Praise the Lord. There you go. Right? Jesus is talking. Thank you, Dr. Nixon. John 16 and 15. All things the Father has are mine. All things the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. So the A clause is that, that is that his will, that he will take what is his will and it is Jesus's will and God's will and he will take what is his and he'll declare it to you. Depending on what translation you read, he will disclose it to you. He will declare it to you. He will expose it to you. He will give it to you. I believe the King James version says this is the new King James version. And so he will take, Jesus is saying, I'm going to take what is mine and I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to take what is mine and I'm going to give it to you. Here is the introduction of a kingdom transfer that Jesus is saying, I'm going to take what is mine, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, power, authority, the future, what is to come. He's saying, I'm going to take what is mine, healing, peace, right? Jesus said this, my peace that I give to you, but not as the world, I'm giving you peace, but not as the world give to you. But I'm going to bequeath. I'm going to will. I'm going to pass on. I'm going to deposit my peace to you. I'm going to take what is mine. He said, all things, all things that are mine. The Bible says that all authority has been given to me. And I am going to give it to you. Listen, pay attention. Class is in session. Jesus said, I'm giving what is mine and I'm giving it to you. That is the kingdom transfer. So when we pray thy kingdom come, add this to your time of prayer. He said, all things, whatever it is that you need, the transfer has already taken place. Thank you for grabbing that and catching that by the spirit, Sister Brittany. All things has been given to you. So a kingdom transfer is when he takes something that is his and he gives it to you. Come on, let's go Bible. Let's talk about let's talk about that word. John 3 and 16. God says, he says, here is my my only son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? That whosoever should believe on him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So he gave life that was his. He gave it to you, right? 
Jesus gave us his peace, right? Let's talk about something else that God gave us. Jesus said, it is my pleasure to give to you the kingdom, the keys to the kingdom. So you have keys to the kingdom of God. And the keys that he's talking about is this transfer of information that is in the heavens. Now he's making it available to you. Here's another thing that I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you um, about something else that in the spirit realm that God has made available to you. First Corinthians 12 and seven says this, it says, but the manifestation of the spirit is given. Transfer, given, transfer, given. First Corinthians 12 and seven says, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one to profit with all. That word profit is P-R-O-F-I-T. That means for you to gain. This is a transfer of gain for you to profit of all for one. He has given, he's transferred the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom through the spirit, the self same spirit to another. He has given faith to another through the same spirit. He has given the gifts he has transferred he has exposed and declared to you gifts of healings. He's also given you other, other gifts like the working of miracles. To another, he has given prophecy. To another, he has given the discerning. That's a powerful word right there. The discerning of spirits. And to another, different kinds of tongues, not just speaking in tongues, but God has given you and transferred to you diverse tongues to another. Not only do you speak in tongues and diverse tongues. I don't know about you, but when I'm praying in tongues, sometimes I am praying, um, a lot of what it seems like, um, Asian prayers like my tongue sound asian so when you're praying in the spirit and you're and you hear a certain dialect it is from another land it is from not only the spirit because the bible says ta um um paul says not only do i you know he speak in the in the language of angels you know angels don't speak english right he has given that to you. He's transferred that to you, right? The interpretation of tongues and to the, the, and to another, the self same spirit, right? Of all these things distributing to each individually as he wills, as he wills. A will is something that people think that God has um, given to people who, um, um, at like when he died, like a will is only active in death, but we're talking about God in the kingdom of God, who's very much alive, well, and living that his will, God's will is not a will like a human will you have written out. I have written out in my will who gets my money. I have written out in my will who gets my property. I've written out um, some details and specifications of these several accounts that are attached to my name. There is a will, but it's not accessible to anybody until I leave the earth. This is not the case as it relates to God. Um, the same thing is also translated as a plan. And so this is why Jesus is talking to them about praying thy kingdom come. When you pray the kingdom come, you praying thy will be done. How can we be praying a will if it's only associated with death? Pay attention. The will of God is not associated in the sweet by and by. 
When you pray thy kingdom come and thy will be done, you are praying for the purposes, the plans, and you are praying for the dreams and visions that God has for you. Come on, let's bring Jeremiah 29 and 11 in this thing. And he says in that text, but I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace, not evil, right? To bring you to an expected end. Some translations say to give you hope for a future. And so the plans of God, the purposes of God is his will for you. That's why you got to know the word. You can't pray what you feel. You got to pray the word of God. And when you don't have the words of God, the Bible says in Romans 8, where the spirit will, will take up our infirmities and the Holy Ghost will pray and he will make intercession through you with groans and things that cannot be interpreted by the human realm. And so this is the realm of God and thy kingdom come and the transfer that God wants you to have. And so um, you have to pray his will, right? Uh, a will is, is, is that you, you desire that thing to be carried out in your absence. But in the kingdom of God, this is not the case, right? So a will is a clear and a detailed version of what God has in store for for you. Say, God has good things in store for me. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And so, um, um, we bring ourselves now, um, to a very important part of the lesson and the teaching in this kingdom transfer that is needed for our time and in our day, because people are saying, well, what do you pray for? How do you pray for the nation? How do you pray for the president? How do you pray for the government, right? Because we hear people saying, Lord, we lift up our president to you. You lifting him up saying, what? What are you saying exactly? We lifted, we, we lifted him up. God bless you, man of God. Tyree, that's in, that's in the NYC. Praise the Lord. So, 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 so he has good things in, in store for you. Um, um, so, so you pray for the nation. You pray for those that are in lead. And this is how we're getting ready to step into it, right? This is what we're getting ready to step into. This was the scripture that I gave you prematurely. Um, right here. This is 1 Kings 3 and 9. 1 Kings 3 and 9. This is um, Solomon. Solomon is praying this prayer to God and I will give you the backdrop on it through taking you through some um, other verses. Stay with me. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people. If you are going to pray for any people in authority, you pray for them. That's right, Sister Fuller, good things are in store for you. You pray for them to be able to rule with an understanding heart, right? But this was a king to judge your people that I might discern. I really could close the Bible and get out of character because I'm teaching in character right now. But really get out of character and the, um, you know, the, the, the corner evangelist with the mic and speakers on the corner uh, will, will erupt and come out of me. And, and if, if we close the book right here, right, that I might discern between good and evil, because we got people in the white house right now who can't discern. We have people with college degrees that can't discern. We got people with, um, doctor in front of their name and PhD behind their name. And they can't discern. We have people practicing medicine and they can't discern. Oh my God, it's getting good through here. It's getting good through here. So that I may discern. So you pray for your president to be able to discern between good and evil. You pray for the government to be able to pray and to pass laws 
that is good for the good, for the good, right? So let me finish the text. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? Not only was Solomon talking about great people as of the vastness, the, he was not only talking about the number of people, the quantity of people, but he was also talking about Israel as God's elect people. He was talking about Israel as God's elect people. So he wasn't only talking about the number of people. He was talking about God's elect people. So before I get ahead of myself, I want to say to you that this prayer is how you ought to pray for your nation. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. And you pray that our president, the White House, the governor of your state, the mayor of your city, you pray for all of those, the legislation, every officer, every chamber, every representative, uh, every legislation, you pray that they have a understanding heart because they are there looking at statistics, judging you. They are looking at statistics on how much the stimulus should be. They're looking at your tax money. They're looking at how much money you make. They're looking at the grants. They're looking at all of this is making a determination. Money right now is being withheld from you because people can't, the governor, the president, the authorities, they cannot properly discern how to do what. And so this is why you ought to employ your mouth. Hey, Sister Zena, Sister Reed, God bless you. This is how you are to employ your mouth. Now, Solomon was the king, son of a great king. You know him as King David. And so I'm going to read for you um, the previous scripture starting from uh, verse number five, right? This was Solomon's whole request. Request. He said at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night and said, ask what you shall and I'll give it to you. Now you pray that kingdom come and Jesus, God is saying, now you pray what you want to. <laughs> you pray what you, he said, ask what you will. And I, I'm going to make this transfer. My God, that excited me. I'm rocking and trying to keep my peace. Hallelujah to Jesus. He said, he said, you pray. He said, just ask. And I'm going to give you what you will. And I will. And, and then, and then Solomon says in verse six, he said, and Solomon said, you have shown great servant on my father, your servant, David, because he walked before you in truth and righteousness and uprightness and heart with you. And you have continued a great kindness for him that you have given, come on, transferred. Come on, write that in your Bible later on when you have your paper Bible, write that. He has transferred, he has, you have given him a son to sit on his throne as to this day. Now, O oh Lord, you may have your servant king instead of my father, David, but I am a little child and I do not know how to go in and how to come out. It's some people that's in the White House are, and that are in offices that don't know how to go in and how to come out. That means you don't know how to present information before the people. You don't know how to serve your community with wisdom and with understanding and with a good heart that will properly discern what is good and what is evil. And verse eight says, and your servant in the midst of your people whom you have chosen a great people too numerous, remember too numerous to be numbered or counted, which brings us up here to verse nine. Therefore give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people. Let me tell you why people don't pray for the nation. Let me tell you why people don't pray for the nation. Because Solomon 
said this. He says, you, he says, he says, your servant is in the midst of your chosen people. One of the reasons why you don't know as a believer, as an American, how to pray for this niche nation is because you don't value what God values. God values the nation. He values a people that he has called by his name. Anything that God has put his name on, he has valued. And so I love Solomon right through here because he's saying, I want to love what you love. I want to treat well like what you treat well. I want to treat your people with kindness. I don't know how to treat them according to how you treat them, but I see that you value Israel. Why? Because he saw how he went and got them out of bondage and tonight I want you to understand this is your passion and your purpose to employ your mouth to pray because you but could be uh, that kingdom come because I am a valued person God could have let me stay in adultery he could have let me stay a liar he could have let me be an alcoholic surely I had plenty of them around um, he could have allowed me to become a prostitute he could have allowed so much. I could have been in jail right now. It's not that I didn't commit any crimes. It's because the mercy of God that I just didn't get caught. Come on, somebody. I told you don't forget where you come from. I don't know about you, but God came and got me. That's why I don't have the right to be silent because I realize on my best day when people are not calling me or texting me or IMing me or cash apping me, I understand that God love him some Natasha Davis. Why? Because he came and he got me out of some mess. I thank God for every dream that he sent to warn me. I remember when I first got saved where I thought I was going to have my own way, that I was going to go back to doing my own thing and I found myself in the bed with boo right just say just newly saved thought I was gonna go was gonna forget what God just done to my life I was gonna try to go back to being the ordinary and the Lord gave me a dream right there while I was in the bed with boo I said he came and got you whatever state you was in whatever state you've been in God came and and he got you. This is why you got to pray that kingdom come. God can get the vagrants off the street. God can turn the meth addict into a worshiper, into a preacher, into a Bible toting, scripture speaking, praying, prophesying man or woman of God. God desires that we, his people understand the value he wants you to understand the reason why it is necessary for you to pray. You said, speak, Zena. I'm doing the best that I can with the Lord's help. Keep praying for me. And so this is the case. So being in that bed on, 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 on that night in the morning when I woke up, I woke up and saw the death angel. I saw uh, the death angel at the foot of the bed, mm. standing there, tall. I opened up my eyes and I had to keep blinking because I thought that I was seeing things. I opened up my eyes and he had on a hood, a hooded uh, 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 form and and his face was dark and with his skeleton finger he pointed out to me and he said he didn't have a face he didn't have a mouth but I heard him loud and clear he pointed his skeleton finger out at me and he said if you don't get up from there you gonna die and so I just oh my god I, I looked at Boo and Boo was still sleeping and so I began to slid, slide down from out of Boo's arms and, and, and I got up and I got my whole entire self together. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Do you hear what I'm saying to you? God love you so much to warn you. God love you so much saying I'm not playing and he's looking in the earth right now saying y'all think I'm playing but this energy of the coronavirus this energy is your own. 
Ah, this energy of robbing and killing and, and, and you got the ministry of turning the other cheek. I mean, turning the other way, not the other cheek, but you turning the other way. You letting these little girls walk out with, excuse me, with they boobs all out. And you saying that you don't want to offend nobody. You don't, you don't want to offend nobody. Uh, 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 and you got mad in the at the mothers in the church or at the old lady in your neighborhood that said you ought to cover yourself up. And I'm looking at some people on this line and you saying that you could dress the way you want to and you can do what you want to. You right. But the Lord is looking at your nasty heart. Mm, my God. And he's looking at the lasciviousness that you will call. I'm not saying, listen, listen, listen. You good looking. I'm good looking. That is a far place from you to be at a place to where you got yourself all exposed, waiting on somebody to get aroused. That's a whore spirit. Any spirit that will allure you out of a place and you just want to have my attention. Yes, that is a whore spirit right there. Any alluring spirit, any alluring for you to get attention and, and it's husbands and wives out here and men and women that belong to other people. But you out here with your whore spirit, you putting all of that out in the open. Don't worry about it because I had to learn the same thing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah and amen. But when that, when that spirit came to me and told me that you're going to die, I got my whole life together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because that was a warning. God has been so good to you. You belong to him. And he values you so greatly. And our presidents and our governors and our legislation and, 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 and the people who are in the Senate, they don't have that mind right now. Not all of them, but there are some people on Capitol Hill speaking on our behalf. And we need more of them. Right? To be able to discern. And so, this was verse 9. Praise God. And he said, he said, yo people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? Praise the Lord. And then God said to him, because you asked this thing. And have not asked for long life. You asking for long life and you need discernment. You asking for pay on your job and you need discernment you asking god to open a door blow up your business you asking god for a man you asking god for a woman you praying for children what you need to be asking for is discernment you need to be asking for discernment which is another word for wisdom i got i don't want to get ahead of myself and please excuse me in advance for taking my time he says, because you haven't asked for long life for yourself, nor have you asked for riches for yourself, verse 10, first, I'm sorry, verse 11. He said, nor have you asked for your enemies, mm -hmm. but you have asked for an understanding heart. You have asked um, yourself understanding to discern justice. Read it in your Bible. I didn't put it there. Read verse 5 down to verse 12. And the Lord said, I'll give you an understanding heart so that there was not anyone like him in the earth. Solomon had so much discernment and wisdom on how to judge the people. You trying to figure out, listen, let's, let's talk about you for a second. You got a 401k? You got pay flex, you got an HSA, you got a personal savings and a personal checking. You got a business checking, you got a business savings, you got an IRA, you, 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 you got uh, all of this credit, you know, you, you need to learn how to discern how, what you do. What do you do? And those of you, you're talking about you want an 800 credit score, people who have an 800 credit score, they have discernment on how to keep all of that going. They are, they judging well. So you want the score without the, the, the discernment. If you get the score without the discernment, you're going to go right back down. You get the business without the wisdom, you're going right back down. You get the husband 
without the wisdom, you're going right back down. You get the wife without the wisdom and the discernment, you're going right back down. So God blesses us as a nation, but we don't stay on our face as a nation. We don't stay on our face as, 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 as a nation. And so let us move along. Um, um, in, in our, in our lesson for tonight. So, so he said, you didn't ask for riches for yourself and you didn't ask for your enemies. But a lot of times to try to please other people and impress other people, you asking for stuff for yourself. You, you are hoping and praying right now that a door will open for your, for yourself without the wisdom and without discernment. And guess what? Out of time, right? Praise the Lord. Um, but these are all false hopes. Uh, I want to let you know it's false, false, false hopes, selfish prayers. And if you're not praying according to the will of God concerning you, um, I remember praying and asking the Lord, I was like, Lord, you know, I'm praying if this is my season, I'm asking you if this is my season for this job, this, 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 this position is about to come up. And the Lord told me because I was praying for his will and asking him for it. He said, this is not your season. He told me who was going to get the position. He, that guy didn't stay in the position long because he went into business for himself. And then it was my turn. But when I heard that it was not my season and I discerned what the spirit of the Lord was saying, basically he was saying, Natasha, you ain't ready. I baked cookies for the person. I, I had, I had the cookies. I had the cookies on standby because the spirit of the Lord had already talked to me, talked to me that he was going to get it. It was a little, it was kind of scary for him because nobody, hardly nobody knew that he was getting the position. So, so, so you got to, Pray for a discernment, discerning on what you praying about, what you asking God for, right? So the people ask for something. Um, um, so, so, so backing up, bringing this in, um, backing up, um, let's talk about, um, a, that was a wise king, but let's talk about a king that wasn't so wise. Let's talk about Saul for a moment, right? Let's. Fast forward and uh, we're back full backspace and go to uh, First Samuel, um, First Samuel uh, chapter number um, eight, right? So there was a king um, that was appointed. Now you asking for stuff that God don't want you to have. That's why you got to pray that will be done. You praying foolishly. You, you praying foolishness and foolishlessly you, that's what you praying, right? You're, you're praying, um, God, just get me out. I just need a couple of more nickels. I just need a couple of more dimes. That's what you praying, right? But, but it's important for you not to pray what you will. Israel wanted a king and that's not God, what God wanted for them, right? He, they wanted a king and and so they said, we want a king to reign over us, but God didn't want them to have a king. He wanted to direct him themselves. I want to pause and ask you a question. What are you knocking your head and trying to get through a brick wall that God does not want you to get through? This is time for you to get a kingdom transfer. And they rejected what God wanted for them. And they, and, 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 and God said to Samuel, he said, because they reject, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. And so therefore go and appoint them a king. So Saul was appointed. Saul was one of the most arrogant and disobedient kings of, um, biblical times. He did nothing that the Lord instructed him to do. Um, and he ended up being, uh, a selfish king. And so it is important for you to pray that kingdom come. He was selfish and he was overthrown. He was overthrown and he ended up dying a very uh, crazy death. He fell on his own sword because he became a coward. 
but but he got jealous. Why would God appoint you a com a incom incompetent and also a um a king that didn't have confidence? He got jealous over David. The people were chanting David's name that he had ki had killed ten thousands and that he slew ten thousands, and the king got jealous. That's who Israel wanted. Israel wanted a fool. Israel wanted a person that was of the flesh. The Bible describes Saul, a king that is of the flesh. And God wanted to direct them. What are you praying about that is for your flesh? What are you praying about that's for your flesh? Are you praying what Solomon prayed? Because the Bible says that he asked for a discerning heart. But not only did he have riches, the uh, discernment, but the Bible said that God gave him wealth as well. And it traveled all the way to the queen of uh, Sheba. And she came to visit him and she said, the half has not been told of how much wisdom you truly have. Right? So he was tested. And so after God had given Solomon um, what he asked for, uh, remember he said, whatever you ask, right? It's some, it's some points I'm about to give you in this kingdom transfer. And then I'm going to um, let you go for the evening. Check it out. This is what, this is, this is what, um, this is what the Lord said to me, right? This is what he said. He said, wisdom is God's transfer to you. Wisdom is. Have you ever had um, money and you didn't know what to do with the money? And because you didn't have a purpose for the money, you spent all the money out. I tell my daughter all the time, what you, what you don't have a purpose for when it regards to your finances, you will spend it out. You will waste it. Waste is inevitable for any relationship. Money, anything that is in your life without a purpose is going to be wasted. Without, if it's not doesn't have a purpose and a will of the Lord to be in your life, it's going to be a waste. So he says, write this down. Wisdom is God's transfer to you. Let's hit him. Wisdom comes to the humble heart. Because you, you know, you can ask for anything. But prideful people don't ask God for what um, Solomon asked for. He was in a position where he could have anything. Had he been a prideful king, he wouldn't have asked for discernment. So when you have wisdom, you also need discernment of when and how to apply it. So they are one and the same. That's why he said a discerning heart. Right? Two prostitutes came to Solomon and he's Two prostitutes came to Solomon. He had to take his eyes off the fact that they were prostitutes. Maybe they had some allure, something alluring. Maybe they had on a tire that was uh, uh, suggestive. But the Bible says that two prostitutes came to him. One had laid rolled over, over on her baby during the night. Now, did she have some extra... Now, this is what I asked the Lord. Now, just, just me and my personality, this is how I talked to God. I was like, well, how did she roll over? Was she having some extracurricular activities in the bed with her child in the bed? How did she, how did you, how did she do that? How did she do that? Because modern day moms, you know, the baby was on the other side of the, of the bed and the pillow was between you, possibly. Possibly. I'm not saying that it's not possible, but she's a prostitute. Praise the Lord. God bless to you, Sister Candace. I love you, sis. Listen. 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 God gave Solomon wisdom to discern. And he said this. He said, okay, so the one who has the living child, he said, bring the child to me in a sword and I'll cut him in half. But the mother... Of the living child said no she can have him because wisdom is saying to Solomon the one that really wants her ch child to live is the one that 
is the mom of the baby. So I'm saying to you, you can have situations that look similar. You can have situations that look similar and you not know which way to go, what to do first, right? So a humble person is, is going to say, Lord, give me an understanding heart. Help me properly discern, right? Remember, 1 Corinthians already talked about the kingdom transfer. He's giving you wisdom. He's giving you the spirit of knowledge. He's giving you um, the word of wisdom, right? He's giving that to you, but you pray and the Holy Spirit translates and he gives you revelation on what to do. He activates that for what to do. Stiff neck people don't ask for wisdom because you think you, you're going to make the right decision and you rely on what you know. You rely on how you look. You rely on what you have. You are self-reliable. You are on the throne. Right? When you are humble, you don't go to the horoscope. Okay, okay, let me come on in your living room, in your car, on your sofa, in your kitchen, wherever you at. When you are humble and you really want God, you don't look for the horoscopes. According to the Bible, that is witchcraft and it's magic. That's what you call being an astrology. Is, and he names that with the enchanters. See, this is where the saints jump off my live right here. Because I know some out here. I be looking at your Facebook pages where y'all posting your signs when it's your birth month. You in the Leo Nation, Aries Nation, Virgo Nation. You just calling all kind of curses to your life. Instead of saying that I am what God says I am. You calling all this stuff. You want to know some stuff. Y'all got the horoscope apps on your phone now. You on Amazon. You on, uh, 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 on, on Yahoo or whatever. Whatever it is. Somebody was strolling through their phone with me one day. And that's one of the, that's one of the uh, articles that they stop to every day. So it's one of the favorites on their news feed. Huh? You don't want to talk to me no more. Because we talking about you want to know. You want to know outside of the scope of God. So y'all into the palm reading. I see you, devil. You into the palm reading. Stop that foolishness. Come from out of people. Your future ain't in no palm. Hmm? Your future is in the will of God. It's in the word of God. Stop putting all this foolishness up uh, on your page. Talking about what I am. The only thing you put in what you are, the I am in front of it, everything that you said is attached to it, the good and the bad. So if you're saying that a Taurus is, is stiff-necked and hard-hearted, that's what you're going to be all of the time. So where's the character of Christ, Christian? If you're going you to either be a Christian or you're going to be a Taurus. Oh, the saints, Chris. Brother Chris, the saints. Yes, God, the saints, the saints of the living God. That's why we need to pray for our nation. Because there are some people that think it's all right and it's ain't nothing wrong. It's some truth to it. It's some truth. It's some truth to that. I don't want nothing with some truth. The Bible say eat the whole roll. And he said a little bit of living will live in the whole loaf. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want that in my life. I don't want that in my life. And so let me finish my, my list of what the Lord says about wisdom. Um, he said he resists the proud. Give grace to the humble. So people who you saying you want the nation to change and you still prideful, he ignoring you. Because he don't like a, he don't like a proud look. Come on, let's get in his Bible. He looked past the proud. And he comes, that's why Solomon said, he said, I'm a child. I, I don't know how to go. I don't know. And that's why you'll see a person that has a meek and a humble heart and a humble spirit that don't know a lot get elevated over you. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep going. Wisdom is discerning. It's discerning what to do and when to do it. That's what wisdom is. So you got to catch the replays. I'm going to just spill them out for you. Uh you are, you are, wisdom is, is needed to regard or govern things of value. You only need wisdom 
to regard or govern things of value. We got that out of the word of God because he said this is a great people. These are people great in number. You don't value your money because you're not asking God about your money. You don't value your health because you're not asking God about your health. It's more of you that's bound by Mountain Dews, Mountain Dews and Pepsi-Colas. But you say God is in control of your life. It's more of you that are bound by your taste buds than the Holy Ghost having rule over your body. Oh, they got off the, they got off the, let me see. They got off the line then, right? You will only ask for wisdom and wisdom is needed when you regard. Listen, I have relationships right now that I value. I have people that have come into my life and it seems like overnight, seems like overnight that relationship has brought me um, prosperity and it brought me wisdom. And the things that I tried to do for years or for months, these relationships have come into my life and like clockwork, it has gotten done. People that no longer have access to me, to my personal telephone number, you don't have access to me. I don't answer your phone calls, your IMs, your text messages, your inbox, because you didn't value me. A prophet is supposed to bring prosperity into your life. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 20 and 20 that you heed the words of the prophet that he will cause your life to prosper and that God would establish your words. He will establish your works. But for those that they take you for granted, guess what? You'll lose access to what you don't value. So those relationships now, I'm not looking over my shoulder over who don't call me. You don't text me. You don't call me. That's fine. Because believe I am praying over that and governing over that which I value. And I pray and I prophesy and I declare over those things that I value. God allowed me to be an American, so I pray, I decree, and I prophesy over the nation of America. Praise the Lord. Amen. I thank you, Sister Mo, for receiving the word of God. You lose what you don't value. Amen. Praise God. And so you get your paycheck and you don't ask God. You don't ask God. You don't ask God. People come into my life and say, hey, woman of God, you ain't got to do that. You ain't got to pay for that. I got it. I got that. You're a blessing to me. I need somewhere to sow. I need to be connected. The words that you have spoken into my life has been a blessing. They have come to pass. They have encouraged me. They have given me insight. They have given me wisdom. I have a friend that is a walking encyclopedia. I could call him. He's going to give me the information on a lot of things that I need. So I'm not going to miss a birthday or Father's Day. I'm not going to miss, um, you know, calling or texting him for a long period of time. Of time. But why? Because he is valuable to me. He's valuable to me. He's valuable. Not because he's just a friend. He's a friend because he has proven over time. Remember I said that at the beginning of the broadcast. Over time. Over time time it is proven and so the next thing um, that I want you to write in your notes is wisdom is carried in the heart of the right hearted person and not the wicked or the foolish hearted person wisdom is carried in the heart of the righteous person you carry wisdom in with you if you're a righteous hearted person Bible says that the fool disregards instructions. Disregards instructions. Praise God. So I'm going to over, go over them. Watch the replay. Wisdom comes to the humble, not to not the prideful. Because God resists the pride. Um, prideful people don't want to learn nothing. You, 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 you don't want to learn and you don't want to ask for help. Praise the Lord. Wisdom um, is discerning what to do and when to do it. What to do and when to do it. And you will only choose wisdom or operate in wisdom 
um, when it's something that you value. You would only regard or govern things that you value, right? And then wisdom and care is carried in the heart of the righteous. Hallelujah. Wisdom, lastly, is for rulership. God gave Adam and Eve a place to rule. And they could not have done it without wisdom and discernment. But here's where the enemy tricked Eve. He showed her a piece of fruit and he said, do this thing, eat this fruit, because um, she desired to become wise. All that stuff that I was just talking about, the horoscopes, the palm reading, you want to know some stuff so bad to where you're willing to go behind God's back. That, that's, that is, that is. That is deception at its, at its finest. You are deceiving yourself. You say you want to be a man or woman of God, but you keep choosing the wrong man. You keep choosing the wrong woman. You keep uh, getting, you know, in these positions where you are on the bottom. Your management style needs to change. Wisdom is for rulership. It is for management. It is for dominion. And this is why we have to pray that kingdom come. You have to pray God's will for your life. And you got to do that by searching the scriptures. One of the ways you find that out is getting on broadcasts like this where the word of God is being given to you. Being given to you. Plant a seed tonight in this word. Because you need to know where to plant. You need to know who to sow. Some of you, you are sowing your money and you ain't, you're not getting um, any returns. You, 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 you're not sowing in the right place. You, you are not sowing at all. Some of you are not tithing at all. But I'm saying to you, in order for you to have a kingdom transfer, you must have um, God's will. You must have the purposes of God. I've given you tools and instructions and the Holy Spirit has taught you tonight. He's taught you the word of God on tonight. And I want to say to you that our nation needs your prayers. Your own life needs your prayers. If you are seeking the face of God concerning your children, he's going to tell you how to pray for them. He's going to tell you what to do. He's going to tell you um, what their weaknesses are. He's going to show you, but he says, going to take what's mine. Remember our primary scripture, right? All things that I, that, that the father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and he'll declare it to you. He'll dis expose it. To you. He will give it to you. I trust and pray tonight in the name of Jesus that your people will humble themselves under the mighty hand of God. I pray over them tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus today, whoever and whenever they will hear this message on the replay, or even on YouTube, God. I pray for them in the name of Jesus, Lord God, over your people to have a heart Lord God, to ask you for discernment and to ask you for wisdom. For those, Lord God, who are praying and been showing up for prayer and they've been asking you for the spirit of prayer. Lord, I praise you tonight, Lord God, in the name of Jesus for equipping them with a discerning heart of when to pray. When to pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you and we pray for our nation tonight. We pray for our nation this day, Lord. We pray for the White House. We pray for the cabinet of the White House, Lord God, for them to have an understanding heart on how to judge your people. The laws that, that are being made, the medications that are being dispensed. Lord, in the name of Jesus, that it will be because we are valued and not because they see dollar signs. Hallelujah. The heart of the king is in God's hands. 
The heart of the king is in God's hands and he turned it like a river. Turn the heart of our president, of our governors, of our sheriffs, of our mayors, of our senators. Lord God, our judges and attorneys, any of those people, God, we just pray for them right now to have an understanding heart. This is what we pray in the name of Jesus. Your word says that when we pray your will, you hear us. You say pray for them that have the rule over you. And this is our prayer tonight, God. So we thank you that you always hear us when we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. If you had to have an opportunity to pray, my cash app is up on the screen. Also, I want to encourage you to um, go to my website. Praise the Lord. I'm getting testimonies um, of how people are being blessed. Um, we, we have a fight yet to fight. We have a fight. Don't be the type of person that you suck people, that you become a user. Solomon prayed so that he could bless the people. Solomon prayed so he can bless the people. Don't just be on this live sucking it all in and that you don't sow into this ministry and that you don't tag your friends or that you don't share with your friends. I pray for a spirit of boldness to come on you to invite people to live streams, people to be encouraged. There are people who are being attacked with coronavirus. They're being attacked in their health. They need all the prayer support that they could get. And this is the avenue by which the Lord has given us to be able to share, to be able to share, to be able to share, to be able to share. He said, all things that I, I have, I've given to you. So praise God. I thank you so much for those of you that were able to jump on and join. I thank you for those of you that um, hung in here with me from beginning to end. Um, I was supposed to prepare for you um, a gift uh, for for um, for a person who shared first, but I believe Brittany King was the person who shared first. She tagged some people in there first, so you will be getting a gift for from me. But I'll put her information up who it's coming from. You'll be getting be getting some jewelry uh, from Candace Thomas, who is. Um, um, a paparazzi representative. Also, she has a single that is out, but you'll find all of her information um, at the end of the live. I will add those links. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I thank God for each of you that have joined. Um, and it's been a blessed time with you. Go to my YouTube page, please. Subscribe. Like this video and subscribe. Make comments on it. Um, give this video um, a thumbs up um, at the end of the broadcast. Go to my page and just click like and share or love and share whatever is your preference. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. And he is, the Bible says, he that has begun a good work will complete it. And so we're praying, Lord, in the name of Jesus, complete your work. Those of you that have been struggling with sickness, you've been attacked with sickness, sickness in your body, um, tiredness. Um, the person that, that is on this live tonight with extreme fatigue, I pray for you now in the name of Jesus. It feel like you just drop out into sleep from nowhere or it's hard for you to stay awake. It's hard for you to get up and, and walk. I pray for that person who is struggling with fatigue in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of depression. I bind the spirit of stress that will come against your life in the name of Jesus. I pray right now in the name of the Lord that you will put on the garment of praise and exchange for uh, the, the spirit of heaviness in Jesus name. I pray for that in the name of Jesus. I pray for whatever spirit might be attacking you, whatever's going on in your, your blood levels. I pray that it come up in the name of Jesus. I speak to every cell that is in your body. I speak life to your cells. I speak life in the name of Jesus to your blood. I speak life. I speak vigorousness. I speak vitality. I speak energy to your blood cells 
in the precious and holy name of Jesus. I pray for them, Lord God, that are in territories where people are being exposed firsthand to the coronavirus. I pray now, Lord God, if they have already been contracted or if they already have been affected, I pray for supernatural recovery in the name of Jesus. I pray for those that have been exposed and you have not tested positive. I pray in the name of Jesus that that is the report that you will continue to walk in, in Jesus' name. Come on, pray. Father, thank you right now in the name of Jesus that sickness is not my plight. It is not my plot. It is not the promise and the will of God concerning me. John 10 and 10 said that you came that I might have life and life more abundantly. I thank you right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus for life in the name of the Lord. That's okay. If you have to jump, jump off, I understand, but I'm praying for the people who will watch this video and those that need healing. Now I touch those of you that, um, have been problem with your spine, been problems with your back in the name of Jesus. I just pray right now the healing power. I pray right now the balm of God. I pray right now the touch of the Holy Spirit, the warmth, healing power of the Lord in Jesus' name comes over your back in Jesus' name. I pray for those of you that have been having problems in your lower abdominals. I pray right now in Jesus' name that the Lord would touch you. Hallelujah you in the name of Jesus, touch you in your body, touch you in the name of Jesus, that infirmity leave you now in Jesus name. If there's anything, any boils, any cysts, uh, any polyps in the name of Jesus that is affecting your lower abdominals, or if there's any organ problems, I command them to come in alignment with the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. I command it, it bows in Jesus name. Come on, pick up your authority. This is how you pray. Thy will be done. Your will for me is concerning uh, Psalms 103. You said that you load me daily with benefits and you said that you heal me from all sickness and disease. This is how you pray Thy kingdom come. You said in your word, Lord, that the angels excel in strength, hearkening to the voice of God's word. I thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that Psalms 103 and 20 is your will. Let your kingdom come. Come on, put your name in the atmosphere. Put your name in the atmosphere. Father, I thank you right now that as we pray for ourselves, pray for our, we prayed for our nation. We pray for those that are in authority. So father, we pray for our households. I pray for the Davis household in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now that the Davis household is above only and not beneath. I thank you that the days of Oh God of our lives are long. They are bountiful. They are strong and healthy in the name of the Lord. I pray thy kingdom come. I pray that what you have in store for us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, it will not be stolen by the enemy. You said the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but you have come that I might have a life. I thank you right now. I release my, I have come angels. I release my I have come angels in the name of the Lord. And I thank you right now that the angels, according to Psalms 91, they watch over me. They watch over my children. They watch over my house. They watch over my every one of my bank accounts, every one of my accounts with my name on it. I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that the angels of the Lord watch over my life. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus to keep me in all my ways, to keep my daughter in all her ways. Come on. This is how you pray thy kingdom come. You pray thy kingdom come with the word of God. The Bible says that great is the peace of my children. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Pray thy kingdom come in the name of Jesus that me and my house shall be saved and we will greatly multiply. That is the will of the Lord. The Bible says above all things, I desire that you prosper. Come on, prosper everything that is given to you. Everything he's already made the transfer. He said that he desires that I prosper and be in health as my soul prosper. So from the crown of my head, 
to the sole of my feet, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, that my life is prospering in knowledge. My life is prospering in discernment. My life is prospering in understanding. My life is prospering in the name of Jesus, Lord God, with opportunity. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that thy kingdom come and thy will be done. In Jesus' name, for the people, God bless you, Apostle Coleman, um, um, people of the Lord, that person that needs a decision, that person that needs to make a decision, that you're not going to stress, you're not going to have migraines, you're not going to uh, uh, go into worryation, you're not going to go into anxiety, but you will hear the word of the Lord in your sleep, that you will hear the word of the Lord in the inner man. I activate now in the name of Jesus, your ability to hear. I activate now. It is the word of the Lord that you hear his voice. He say, my sheep know my voice. They hear my voice. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus over all of the clutter. I dismantle the clutter in the name of Jesus. And I thank you right now that wherever there has been a disconnect, I pray now in Jesus' name, let there be a restored uh, 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 connection between you and the Lord. In the name of Jesus, that you will hear him and you will not miss him and you will not fail and you will not drop the ball in the name of the Lord. Glory to God. I thank you right now that your ministry is going forward. I speak life to it. Your ministry, your business is going forward. You will prosper in the name of Jesus. I don't care what it look like. Psalm 91 say a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh to you what does that mean in the name of Jesus people around me are losing stuff people around me are getting sick people around me are dying but it shall not come nigh to me in the name of the Lord I thank you right now come on pray the will of God hallelujah I bless you glory to God this is how you pray that kingdom come by praying the word of God. By praying the word of God. Pray for your nation. This is a valued place to the Lord. Pray for your households. Pray for your pray that greater is coming. This is not the mandate for my life. Amen. Sickness is not the mandate. I will not bow. I will not bow. Put on the whole armor of God. Even in the face of sickness, even in the face of disease, even in the face of a bad report, whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? Matthew 19, 26. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible are possible and it shall be possible i'm sorry all things are possible with god with god all things are possible with man by myself it's not gonna work what will you ask and cry out to the lord to help 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 greater is coming you can write your book you can finish the book you can, and you will. You will get your business off the ground. You can, and you will. You can, and you will. You can, and you will, in Jesus' name. Because you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you, and this is the will of the Lord for you to prosper. So whatever it takes, God is willing to do. There is no limit, right? Bible says um, that God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think according to the power that is at work. He's already given it to you. The transfer has already been made. Amen. Thank you for hanging in there with me. We went over time. Thank you for going the distance with me. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Come, whoever is scheduled to have back surgery and will see this 
uh, video. I pray in Jesus' name for a complete and a total healing over your body, over your back, in Jesus' name. God is a God of miracles. He's a God of miracles. Amen. What nation is that that have joined us? Um, Sister Griffin, what nation is that? I don't recognize the flag. What nation is that? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I believe the report of the Lord. I believe the report of the Lord. Those of you that need miracles, you got to pray that kingdom come. You got to pray that kingdom come. You got to pray that kingdom come. You need a miracle. You don't qualify for a miracle until you need it. A door to open for your body to be healed, for property to come, whatever it is, for whatever it is, whatever it is, the Bahamas, praise the Lord. God bless you from the Bahamas. I have Sister Odessa and I have um, Sister Justina um, that are from the Bahamas. I believe Sister Justina is still in the Bahamas. So God bless you, woman of God. We pray over your nation. We pray in the name of the Lord for the leaders that is in the Bahamas. In Jesus' name, we send our voice to you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. We send our voice to you. We send the word of the Lord to you in the Bahamas. Hallelujah, that you will be above only and not beneath. And a decision that you need to make will be clear and it will be apparent as to which way you will go. In the name of the Lord, fret not for the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, Brother Tyree. God is with you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Great and mighty things are happening for you. Hallelujah. I pray that the Lord will use you, Sister Griffin, as a powerful conduit for his people of prayer and of intercession in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, that's my time. If you haven't sold, you can sow 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This is my prayer for you, that you stay in God's will by praying that kingdom come and praying thy will be done. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Good night. I love you all. See you back on Sunday night. God bless you.